you ready? Are you ready? Oh, are you ready to go? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to go? Hello, it's Mr. T, and this is uh, part one of two videos on piecewise functions. In this video, we'll be talking about what piecewise functions are and what their applications are in real-world applications, and we'll also be talking about evaluating piecewise functions. So let's get started. There are many situations that we run into in regular, everyday application where the rules that define a particular situation depend on what the input is. So for example, when you go to the movies to buy tickets, the price you pay for each ticket will depend on the age. They usually have prices for child tickets, adult tickets, and senior citizen tickets. Uh, if you're buying items in quantity, frequently there are discounts if you buy certain quantities. So the price per item will vary depending on how many items you purchase. And as you get a job and maybe after you graduate from college and you get a nice paying job, your federal income tax, the rate at which the government takes money out of your pay, uh, is dependent on your income level. So all these situations where we have uh, different rules for different types of inputs, these would all be modeled by piecewise functions. So let's look at an example. So let's look at the movie ticket price example. So in this case, we have uh, three kinds of tickets, child tickets, adult tickets, and senior citizen tickets, and we want to write a function definition. So function definitions, remember we have a function name. Let's call it uh, function P. And we'll use X for the age of the person we're buying tickets. Now normally we would just put here the rule, but when it's a piecewise function we're going to sort of have a table, so we're putting a bracket here, and each rule will be composed of two parts. The actual rule for what the price is, so we have the actual rule, and then we have the domain for that rule, meaning the values of inputs that that rule applies for. So our first rule, let's put for children, the price is $5. So the rule is the price will be $5. Now what's the domain for this? So the ages are 12 and under. So that would be if x is less than or equal to 12. Now there's different notations. I will be using a semicolon to separate these. Sometimes you see the word if right here, so depending on the book and the format. So let's go to the next rule. So the next rule will be for adult tickets. Those are $12 each, and the domain for that is x has to be greater than 12. And then our next rule will be if you're 65 and older you get a different price, so this will be less than 65. And our last price is $8, and that is for ages that are greater than or equal to 65. So this would be what a typical piecewise function looks like. This is a single function. In this case, we have three rules, and each rule has a domain that tells us which values of x that that particular rule applies to. In this particular case, each rule is a constant. When we look at graphs of these, a constant function is a horizontal line. So this particular kind of function, when all the pieces are uh, horizontal lines, is referred to as a step function. So if you hear the word step function, you know that each of the segments of the function will be horizontal lines. So let's look at another example. So in this example, what we want to focus on here is evaluating a function. So remember when we have function notation, we take this input of x and plug it into our function. When we did function notation earlier in the year, our function rule was just a single rule, 
and we would match the letter of the function with the letter of the function definition and we would plug in for the x. Here, before we plug in, we have to decide which of these rules to plug into and we use these domain statements. So we first check the negative 5 here for this first example, first part of the problem, and see which of these domains will that make true. Well, negative 5 is less than negative 2, so we'll be using this rule. So we're going to plug in to there. So we've got negative 5 squared minus 3, which would be 25 minus 3, or 22. So f of negative 5 is 22. So let's look at negative 2. Now we have to be careful on these boundaries that we use the right rule. This rule, because of this uh, inequality statement here, the negative 2 is part of this rule. Now this rule is a constant function, so when we plug negative 2 in, there's no x. So the value of the function is just that constant value, 5. So no matter what x values that are in this interval here, this will be the value of the function. So for example, 3 is between negative 2 and 5. So again, the value of f of 3 would be 5. Now when we get to 5, we're again at a boundary value. So we need to see which of these inequalities the 5 is part of. The 5 is part of this one. So we would be using this rule. So 25 minus 2 times our x, which is 5. So we get 25 minus 10, or 15. And finally, 10, again, would be in this rule. So we've got 25 minus 2 times 10, which would be 5. So function notation, uh, evaluating functions when they're piecewise functions, is fairly simple. It's just we have to first match which of the rules to use. Now, when we plug in, we're only plugging into the rule. We're not plugging in over here. We just use this to decide which is the applicable rule just like when we went to the movie theater and bought our tickets. Now, if the function is given to us instead of in function notation as a graph, we can evaluate. Now, earlier in the year, we've evaluated functions from a graph. So remember, to evaluate a function from a graph, this is the x value, so x is negative 4. We go up or down till we run into the graph, and we read its y value. So at negative 4, our y value is negative 3. So f of negative 4 is negative 3. At negative 2, our y value is also negative 3. At f of 0, so we go to 0, we're at negative 2. Now when we get to f of 2, we have to be careful and we have to decide do we use this value or this value? For it to be a function, it has to pass the vertical line test, meaning it can only be a valid value at one point. When we did inequalities, remember, when we're graphing an inequality, an open circle means getting as close to negative 2 but not including that point. A solid circle means that uh, value of x is, is uh, included there. So when we go to f of 2, this is our value, which is at negative 1. When we go to x equals 4, we're on this part of the piecewise function, so our value of y is 0. And finally, at 5, we are here, which is also is at 3. So we've uh, wrapped up our first part of the tutorial on piecewise functions. We've talked about the format of piecewise functions. We have a series of rules. And for each rule, we have a domain statement. And we've talked about how to evaluate those. And again, there's quite a few real-world applications where a uh, more complicated function definition that depends on the input is an appropriate model. So I'll see you in the next tutorial, and we'll talk about how do we sketch graphs of a function definition that's written like this. See you around. Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh.